I hate to keep bringing up yesterday, but 24 hours ago, we witnessed what's on your screen. The Dow suddenly dropping nearly 500 points. It wasn't just the Dow. All the major averages gave up big gains. This after the 2 p.m. release of the Fed minutes. This was a Federal Reserve's January meeting, and it sent Treasury yields to a fresh four-year high, which then triggered... Well, we asked one of our expert traders yesterday, Ira Epstein, what the cause of the dizzying market swing was, and he blurted out this. High frequency trading, F <laughs> HFT, that is the name of it. And they play on each word that comes out, and as it comes out and you stand in front of a train, that's what happens is that type of money comes into the market. There is a huge battle about whether he's right, so we're going to report you decide. Avi Gupta is the CEO of Accelerate, the company that pioneered high-speed computerized trading in the entire nation of India, and Themis Trading co-founder Joe Saluzzi. He's the author of Broken Markets. He says HF uh, trading is destroying investor confidence. Uh, you, I'm going to guess, Joe, that you agree with what Ira Epstein said, but how do you know? Well, this has been going on for a while, Liz, and, and thanks for having me on. And, sure. You know, we wrote our book in 2012, and, and I think what mo most investors need to understand is that today's markets are different. We don't have the specialists and market makers of yesteryear. We've got electronic market makers, and they're out there at times supplying liquidity, trading for a spread throughout the day, mm -hmm. but there were also times during volatility, like we've seen over the past few days, where they could exacerbate the volatility and go in the same direction, let's just say. In other words, not adding that liquidity that we are expecting. And I think that's what your guest yesterday was getting was mentioning our Fox business translator said they effectuate these trades over short periods of time folks we're talking one millionth of a second way faster than an individual investor who may be watching right now can can even press a button Abi uh, how does it work because this is your company doing many of these types of fast trades um, <clears throat> well you know it it's it's like any other trade and you have a model you come and especially for uh, for sort of quantitative, systematic, uh, data-driven um, uh, trading, you, you use you know, large amounts of data to come up with a model, mm -hmm. and then you're using that model to um, to, to trade. Um, you you know you uh, if you're a liquidity provider, you 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 are um, placing bids and offers on the both sides. Um, I mean, and do, so on. do you understand the role? Do you agree that high-frequency trading takes some type of role here? Because I can tell you, in the year 2000, mm -hmm. high-frequency trades were 10 percent of the equity market. Now, there's some, well, actually, the numbers only go to 2009. They jumped 164% to 73% of all trades. Yeah, as in I think this is a uh, natural sort of ball of technology rolling forward, right? Like now our lives are ruled by algorithms. Like okay, look at evolution. What, what, yeah, is what Facebook is, like, you know, what we order from what movies we watch to what books we read is driven by algorithms, and this is no different. As in this is just, you know, better technology making markets more efficient. Joe, billionaire and, and high-tech uh, genius uh, Mark Cuban put out a tweet, <laughs> and in it he actually tagged you. He seems to agree he's concerned about this. We can put the tweet up on the screen. And by the way, in what he said, Said about it, he said algorithmic trading's presumption of liquidity is a significant threat to our country's well-being. In fact, he calls on Gary Cohn and Steven Mnuchin to conduct a market stress test to see if we can handle that. What do you say about that? Yeah, I, I think Mark is an extremely astute observer of today's modern electronic market structure. He, he's, he's on there. And, and I think the, here's the key point. You know, Abby's firm, I'm sure, is, is, is doing great things, and, and they're pro proprietary traders. Yeah, they're and here's not the difference. The law. Right. When you're a proprietary trader, you're going to do what's a, you're going to trade what's available. But the problems that exist really started at the stock exchange level. They were the ones, the New York Stock Exchange, Nasdaq, Bats, that gave out the ability for speed trading. Mm -hmm. In other words, co-location, proprietary right. data feeds, and things called rebates, all aided in this new fragmented market that we have today. So we can't go backwards. But there are things that we can do to kind of get more diversity into the limit order books. So maybe what Mark is saying is, you know, why did we plunge down so fast? Well. Because because there are no real limit orders out there. There are no real retail or institutional buyers because they're afraid they're going to get picked off all day, so they hide in dark pools. Abhi, so what you need okay. to do is bring those guys back in. Okay, Avi, can you do that and still deal with your proprietary experience really quick? Um, uh, yes or do no? Do a market, st market stress test or bring, <laughs> yeah. bring more participants in? I think we should bring more participants in into the market, of course. We should bring in you know, everyone who's like afraid of the market. There's no reason to be afraid. Right? You should be in the market.